Few people realize that liquefied petroleum gas, the familiar fuel stored in household cylinders, is compressed at extremely high pressure to power not only cooking, but also heating and industrial uses. Behind its quiet appearance lies a dense form of energy, where even the smallest mistake can result in disaster. What makes LPG remarkable is not just its intense heat potential, but the way humans have mastered the technology to extract, liquefy, store, and transport it safely. From deep drilling wells beneath the earth to the precise steel valves on every cylinder, the journey of LPG is a story of rigorous engineering concentrated into a silent yet powerful source of energy. Let's dive into the technology behind the gas cylinder to understand why it has become a reliable source of energy for millions of households. Beneath the Earth's crust, layers of sedimentary rock formed from ancient organic matter have accumulated and transformed over tens of millions of years, trapping vast reserves of oil and gas, including LPG. This energy source is not found close to the surface. It usually lies thousands of meters beneath the ocean floor or sealed within dense rock formations. To reach it, humans must contend with extreme environments, immense pressure, and geological challenges that are anything but simple to overcome. The journey to extract natural gas often begins far offshore. On survey vessels, engineers deploy powerful acoustic transmitters into the sea. The sound waves travel to the seabed, bounce back, and are captured by arrays of sensors floating on the surface. From this data, three-dimensional seismic maps are created, revealing sedimentary layers that may have trapped oil and gas for millions of years. But maps alone are not enough. To confirm, drilling rigs are positioned at promising sites. Hundreds of steel pipes, each nine meters long, are connected end to end, forming a massive drill string that cuts through the water column and deep into the rock. At its tip is a bit fitted with ultra-hard alloy teeth, grinding relentlessly through the strata. Once a section is drilled, engineers lower an electronic eye, a logging tool packed with sensors, into the well. In the darkness below, the logging device emits electrical pulses, sound waves, and gamma rays that penetrate the rock walls. The returning signals are relayed to the surface, forming bands of data that reveal porosity, permeability, and reservoir pressure. These numbers decide whether a well costing $50 to $100 million becomes a producing field or remains a dry hole abandoned forever. Yet looming over every operation is the risk of a blowout. If pressure is mishandled, oil and gas can surge uncontrollably to the surface. Such leaks not only devastate marine ecosystems, but can also unleash environmental disasters costing billions to contain. That is why every step must be tightly controlled, because a single misstep can turn an ambitious project into a global catastrophe. Once the drill reaches a gas reservoir, the well bore is reinforced with layers of steel casing and sealed with cement to stabilize the formation and prevent leaks. At the seabed, engineers install a blowout preventer, BOP, a massive steel block weighing tens of tons. This device contains multiple high-pressure valves capable of clamping around the drill pipe or sealing the well entirely within seconds, strong enough to contain pressures exceeding 10,000 psi and avert catastrophic blowouts. With safety systems in place, extraction can officially begin. At first, natural reservoir pressure forces the gas upward through the production tubing. As pressure declines, artificial lift methods are introduced such as gas lift, injecting compressed gas back into the well, or booster compression systems to maintain a steady flow. The rising stream carries not only gas, but also water, condensate, liquid hydrocarbons, and fine sand. On the offshore platform, this mixture passes through multi-stage separators. Gas is isolated, recompressed, and either piped ashore or re-injected into the reservoir to sustain pressure. Water is treated to remove oil and contaminants before being discharged back into the sea under strict regulations. Condensate is collected separately for temporary storage. Throughout the process, thousands of sensors monitor pressure, temperature, and flow at every stage, sending real-time data to the control center, 
Advanced rigs are even satellite-linked, enabling engineers onshore to intervene remotely. Any irregularity, from a sudden pressure drop to abnormal flow rates, triggers automatic alarms and can shut down the well instantly. Offshore gas production, therefore, is a tightly managed chain of operations, from flow initiation and phase separation to treatment and storage, where constant oversight is vital. Even the smallest error can cost millions of dollars and inflict lasting damage on marine ecosystems. Once the gas reaches the surface, the very first job is to separate the mixture. What comes up through the production pipe isn't just gas. It also carries formation water, light condensate oil, and even fine sand. On the offshore platform, this entire stream enters multi-stage separators, where it is split into three parts, gas, liquid hydrocarbons, and water. The water is treated and released back into the sea under strict environmental standards. The condensate is collected and stored like a light crude oil, and the raw gas continues forward for further processing. At this stage, the gas is dehydrated to remove moisture. This prevents corrosion and the risk of freezing inside the pipelines. Then harmful impurities such as CO2 and H2S are carefully extracted because they lower quality and can be dangerous. With the stream now clean, it moves into deep cooling units or distillation systems to recover key components. Methane is kept for natural gas supply or chilled into LNG. Propane and butane are compressed into liquid form, becoming LPG. Any leftover condensate is sent away for treatment as crude oil. Only after completing all these steps is the gas truly ready to continue its journey toward onshore processing plants. Onshore gas extraction is often more complex and expensive than offshore drilling. Instead of going straight down into seabed formations, the process begins with extensive geological surveys. Engineers use seismic waves, exploratory drilling, and rock sample analysis to locate sedimentary layers with high porosity and permeability, the essential conditions for gas accumulation. Once a promising site is identified, the well is drilled. At first, the bit cuts vertically, plunging thousands of feet underground. But because most onshore reservoirs lie within tight shale or sandstone, horizontal drilling is applied. From a vertical well, the drill string is steered sideways, extending for miles to maximize contact with the reservoir. Yet horizontal drilling alone cannot release the trap gas. That's where hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, comes in. Millions of gallons of water, mixed with sand and chemicals, are pumped down the well at immense pressure, often exceeding 10,000 psi. This force opens countless microfractures in the rock. Sand particles lodge inside these cracks, propping them open so the gas can flow into the well bore. The production stream that rises contains more than just methane. It also carries water, condensate, and impurities. As soon as this mixture reaches the surface, it enters separators. Cylindrical steel vessels, either horizontal or vertical, their role is to split the flow into three phases, natural gas, hydrocarbon liquids, and formation water. Gas rises to the top and is routed into pipelines. Condensate settles at the bottom and is collected in storage tanks. Formation water is captured for treatment before reuse or disposal. Depending on the field, separators may be two-phase, gas liquid, or three-phase, gas oil water. These seemingly simple devices are critical. They stabilize the gas stream, prevent liquids from being carried over, and safeguard the entire production system from corrosion. Whether extracted offshore or on land, once the gas has gone through primary separation and initial treatment, it must be sent to central processing plants. When the field is close to shore, the most common solution is high-pressure pipelines. Stretching for hundreds of miles beneath the seabed or across the landscape, these pipelines act as the lifelines of transport, with compressor stations placed along the route to maintain steady pressure. For fields located farther away or in difficult terrain, the gas is partially liquefied and loaded into specialized carriers. LNG and LPG ships offshore, or tanker trucks and ISO containers on land. Regardless of whether the journey is by pipeline, by sea or by road, 
the entire process is closely monitored by pressure and temperature sensors, along with leak detection systems to ensure maximum safety. Thanks to this extensive transportation network, gas from wells deep under the ocean or locked within layers of rock can finally converge at modern plants, ready to be refined into LNG, LPG, and a wide range of other essential energy products. When the raw gas arrives at a processing plant, it undergoes further refinement to meet commercial standards. First, it passes through dehydration units, which use glycol or solid adsorbents to remove moisture. This step prevents freezing and corrosion during transport. Next comes sweetening, where CO2 and H2S are stripped out using an Emmen solution, improving energy value while eliminating dangerous toxicity. Once cleaned, the gas is fed into cryogenic systems or fractionating towers to separate its key components. Methane is recovered as natural gas or cooled to minus 162 degrees Celsius, minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit, to form LNG. Ethane is diverted to the petrochemical industry for plastic production. Propane and butane are compressed into liquid form, becoming LPG, the familiar household fuel. Any remaining condensate is collected and treated like a light crude oil. It is here at the processing plant that natural gas truly transforms, turning from a complex mixture into multiple product streams, ready for transport and distribution on a global scale. LPG is ready, but to store and distribute it safely, a perfect steel armor is required. The gas cylinder. The chosen material is usually hot rolled or cold rolled steel, valued for its ability to withstand high pressure and resist deformation. Sheets are cut by mechanical or automated plasma machines into precise blanks, circular pieces to form the domed ends, and rectangular strips to be rolled into the cylindrical body. Tolerances must remain within just a few millimeters, since even a small deviation can directly compromise pressure resistance. These blanks are then sent into heavy-duty presses for three-dimensional forming. The body plates are rolled into tubes, while the circular pieces are stamped into hemispherical domes. Each press stroke can exert tens of tons of force, demanding die molds with exceptional hardness and near-perfect precision to ensure consistent shapes. Once formed, the components move to automated arc welding stations. Here, the longitudinal seam along the body and the circular welds at both ends are fused at temperatures of thousands of degrees Celsius, allowing the metal to penetrate deeply and bond into a sealed unit. Sensors continuously track voltage, current, and torch speed to prevent porosity or warping. Afterward, fittings such as the valve neck, carrying handle, and base ring are welded in place, followed by ultrasonic inspection and load testing to eliminate any risk of leakage. With the mechanical shell complete, the surface undergoes treatment through high-speed sandblasting or chemical degreasing to remove scale and rust. The cylinder is then coated with anti-corrosion primer and a branded color layer using electrostatic spraying before being cured in heated chambers for stronger adhesion. This protective finish not only shields the steel against harsh weather, but also extends the service life of the cylinder for decades of use. Before entering the filling line, every empty cylinder must pass a leak test to eliminate any risk of failure. Each cylinder is pressurized with compressed air at a level far above its normal working pressure, then fully submerged in a transparent water tank. If even the smallest stream of bubbles appears on the surface, it indicates a microscopic hole in the shell or at a weld seam, and that cylinder is rejected immediately. Only those that pass this inspection are cleared for LPG filling. At the filling station, liquefied petroleum gas under high pressure is transferred from central storage tanks into the filling system. Each cylinder is connected through a specialized valve that locks securely and shuts off automatically once the set filling level is reached. Before filling, the empty cylinder is weighed. Afterward, it is weighed again to confirm the exact LPG content commonly 26 pounds, 100 pounds, or other commercial sizes. Modern filling systems can process thousands of cylinders per day with accuracy down to just a few grams. Once filled, 
Each cylinder passes through electronic leak detectors with highly sensitive sensors, ensuring that no trace of gas escapes. Only cylinders that meet all safety standards are sealed, certified with inspection labels, and sent forward into distribution. From deep underground oil and gas fields to the familiar cylinders found in every household, LPG goes through a demanding and highly technical journey. Every stage, from extraction, treatment, separation, liquefaction, storage, and transport to the final filling, is tightly controlled to guarantee maximum safety for the end user. This is not just a fuel for daily life, but the result of engineering, technology, and precision at every detail. If you found this journey impressive enough to change the way you look at something as ordinary as a gas cylinder, show your support with a like, leave a comment, and share this video to spread useful knowledge. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss upcoming stories about the world of manufacturing and technology around you.